know if you can see it, but they've put some nice little scratches in the handle portion as well as the top of the gun there as well. And there's the other side of it. Moving slightly larger in the way of, of guns, we have a Sig Sauer P226 or P226. A little bit larger of a firearm. I'm actually comparing that to the Walter. You can see it's a much bigger handgun. But like the smaller handgun, you can go ahead and grab the clip. Just kind of get your finger in there and pull the draw the clip out. And uh, they've also sculpted that in as well. Unfortunately, though, I've got a little bit, not on this side, but on this side, I've got just a little bit of gold paint that's been added to it. I guess it's uh, it might have rubbed a little bit. Maybe it was wet. I'm not really certain, but just a little bit of gold paint. I mean, it's going to be concealed far deep into the handle of the the pistol. So I really am not too bothered by that. But I just want to just want to mention that. One thing that's neat though about this one is if you draw back the P20 P226, I should say, you can see right inside there is the bullet. That is the same bullet. Let me just pull that out there. That is the same bullet that's inside. I, I like that they've made that as a visible thing that you can look inside and still see, much like an actual Sig Sauer two, uh, P226, you can actually make out that there's the pistol in the chamber or about to be entered into the chamber. A little bit of, again, scratching. A little bit of silver paint has been added there just to give it that sense of realism. I do like that. 3-0 is really good, especially when it comes to accessories, the little smaller accessories. Uh, no detail seems uh, left out. So it comes with those. Now he also comes with a holster, um, presuming it is for the larger of the two. Uh, I thought this was actually uh, a snap. Instead it appears to be, let me just show you here. I thought it was a snap. It actually is a loop, almost like, almost like a button, I guess, really. And then that fits over over top just like that. It's a little on the harder side to get it over. But one thing that's good about it, though, is it's a larger, it's not quite a snap, but it's a little bit larger that at least there's enough that you can push down against versus a very small one that at times, if you've ever had small like holsters or little small things for these six scale figures, if they are the very thin variety, I've had problems where trying to put that down uh, it ends up bending the peg a little bit. So a nice big broad peg. And you just go open that up and take the pistol and just feed that down in place like that. It still is enough clearance that you can get that back over top. It in a way actually aids you. It does help you to get it around there because now at least you've got something hard that you can press it against as opposed to you're just pressing it against the holster. So there is that. Now I wish though that this, they've sewn, let me just show you here, the looplet that fits around his belt. They haven't magnetized it. Instead they've stitched it in place. It does mean it's a little bit harder to kind of get it around his belt. I would have preferred to slip it down onto his belt. Instead, what I would end up having to do is opening up his jacket, undoing his belt, and then lacing, feeding the belt through here, like you would, um, I guess you would with a conventional uh, holster. So it is accurate to a real holster, but I wish it was more like a clip inside that, you know, you could just clip it on top of in place. It's on top of the belt there. Moving along, a frequent sight, both Mulder and Scully would be uh, sporting their dual uh, light, uh, flashlights here. Nothing is removable on the flashlight, primarily cast in black plastic. It looks as if they've given a slight like metallic paint to the end of it, so if the light hits it just right, it does give it that sense that it is actually lit up and they've put a little uh, plastic cap over top of it. So the paint is actually not on the end, it's actually further down. And then they put the clear, the clear circular disc over top of it. This gives it a little bit more depth. It looks like a flashlight more so, rather than just, you know, painting the end of it. So I do like that. Moving along, he also comes with his wristwatch. 
which let's see if we can make out the time here. I guess it would be facing, no, I guess it would be facing that way. Would it be roughly 2.20? Is that correct? 2.20 on Mulder's watch. I'm trying to think if there is actually some significance to that specific time. It would be rather clever if 3.0 deliberately put the time like that. I would have to actually go back and rewatch the X-Files. See if there's a deliberate reasoning why it has to be that specific time. And this just simply fits over his wrist. So we can go ahead and grab the figure, slide up his sleeve, just go pop the hand off, and we'll slip the, the watch over top of that and just kind of plug the hand back into place. There he's got his wrist watch. Don't worry, don't worry. We'll look at the figure in a second. He also comes with his FBI badge. And unlike the holster, the belt holster, this one has a metal clip. And just before, just before we put it on Mulder to see if we can get a close look at it. And it is, it is the image of David Duchovny, his signature and FBI special agent. It is on a clear, there's the back of it. And uh, like I said, it's, it's more like a little metal clip. So we take that and we can slide that down into his pocket his breast pocket of his jacket. There we go. While we're also on the topic of ID, he comes with his wallet, complete with the Department of Investigation, the FBI badge there down below. It's sort of on a faux leather. It's not something I would probably say you want to be bending all that much. I mean, there is obvious give, but I mean, with time, you may start developing a seam line or stress mark in the middle of the wallet. So I would say, if anything, you probably would be inclined more so to kind of keep it like this anyways, as if he was showing somebody, you know, Fox Mulder, FBI. But a nice little small touch. I, this is something that would... I, I would almost feel disappointed if he didn't come with this, much like I would feel disappointed if he didn't come with his name badge. It sort of just kind of goes hand in hand. When eventually they do release uh, Scully, which I'm super excited for, because obviously you get, if you're going to get Mulder, you'd have to get Scully. I would likely display both of them, really, with name ba with their, their wallets in hand, or I would probably display them with the flashlights of all the things that he has come included with. And then lastly... Just to date ourselves for how old the show is, there he is with also a cell phone. Would that be a Nokia cell phone? This is a little bit broader. I had a smaller, I think everybody at one point had the smaller Nokia phones. Remember the ones that were blue, kind of like an off bluish gray? Those things were indestructible. Texting on them, nightmare. I tried it. Yeah, I'm old. But a neat looking phone, just, you know, really putting this specific show, this specific character in a very specific time frame, very, you know, chunk of time frame that uh, I remember exactly what I was doing when I used to watch X-Files. I know exactly where it was in life. And, uh, you know, this is certainly like one of those time capsule pieces. I mean, really all of the accessories that come included with Mulder is, but I think this one the most, just because it's... You know, the old vintage phone. Got so caught up looking at the accessories. Let's move further to the interchangeable hands that he comes included with. Now, currently, I've got him as he would appear out of packaging. Defaulted, slightly relaxed hands. But he also does have uh, a pair of closed fists. I usually go through the closed fist first because it's very seldom something I'm ever going to display with the figure. I appreciate it for the fact that they do include it. But really, for all the neat accessories he comes included with, I don't ever see myself ever displaying him just with uh, a pair of closed fists. That's that's just me. Uh, he does also come with a pair of trigger hands, adequately suited for wielding either one of the pistols. We just kind of slide that in place just to show you. There you go. And you can see it. the trigger finger fits perfectly on the trigger of the gun there. And just bring that forward. And he has two of those. So if uh, there's the other one. So if you, depending on which hand you want to have Mulder, you know, with a pistol, uh, you're, you're covered basically in both senses. 
And then he does also come with gripping hands, you know, suited for holding, for example, the flashlight, suited for as well holding the name badge, the wallet, I should say. And you sort of just can slide that in place. You really don't even involve much effort of prying away the fingers. It simply just seems like a simple case of just sliding, just sliding the wallet between the four fingers and the palm of his hand. With that all being said, let's finally have a look at Fox Mulder in all his six scale glory. Now, of all the three zero releases, this is the one that I was really excited for the most. Again, speaking a little bit about the accessories, this is really part of my childhood or really where I was in the 90s. Uh, I certainly remember watching X-Files every single Friday night on Fox. I think it was at 9 o'clock. And I used to watch that religiously. 3-0 has done a bang-up job of capturing the likeness here of Fox Mulder. Don't worry, we'll get into some close looks at the face. Um, he does come for, for instance, outfit-wise. I'm doing like a double take here, because part of me thinks that that suit is black. Although lighting hitting it the way that it is, it almost at times feels like it reads as almost like a very dark, dark navy. But I think it actually is a black suit. It's just the light playing tricks on me. The suit is quite well tailored. Um, both the out and the interior seam is, uh, the seam work is done really quite well here. Uh, it doesn't appear to have any inner pockets. So if there's anything that Mulder wants to be concealing, won't be able to conceal it here. I want to mention about something about the jacket in a second. Um, it also, of course, has his blue shirt and a tie. So all of which, I might add, uh, I was going to a wedding when I was younger, around the 90s, of course, and I deliberately tried to find a suit, a shirt, and a tie of this color scheme because I really liked how it looked on Mulder. That's a true story. That's actually a true story. does also have a belt, a fully working belt, which, of course, would have to be opened up and uh, to get the holster in place. A uh, pair of slacks which I guess has the seam, the seam in the slacks, and a pair of quite rather shiny, very shiny dress shoes in which they've sculpted in the laces there. I like how the light is reflecting off of that. Flip it upside down and you've got the 3-0 logo, logo, and then on the other side you've got X-Files and uh, 2018 Fox. Before I forget, I do want to talk about the jacket here for a second. When you get the jacket out, or rather I should say the jacket is on Mulder, when you get Mulder out of box, initially you think that the jacket is sewn shut. Now that would be ideal for some, but I would much rather display Mulder with his jacket open. That's my own personal preference. So I thought that the buttons were sewn to the jacket where you couldn't open it up. It was a very pleasant surprise to find, let's see if I can actually do it here, that the buttons are workable buttons. 3-0 has actually put workable, now it might be a little bit more difficult for me to do this on camera, but they have actually put a loop on the one side that in theory, if you can pull it off while looking through a camera, you can actually take the buttons and feed them through. And that's pretty, that is pretty, uh, awesome, I must say, that they would go to the smallest of details like that to incorporate a functional button. All the while I'm saying this, I'm trying to feed the button through the looplet here. Now, this, of course, comes with a bit of a price. I can't imagine that the threading that's holding the button, while well, strong as it may seem, I don't know if I would repeatedly do up the button, undo the button, and so on and so forth, uh, just because I wouldn't want to uh, to break uh, the threading here, because that would be an absolute nightmare to re-stitch that with. These giant hands could never do the seam work on such a small looking button. I feel like I wouldn't be doing my job as a reviewer if I didn't spend some time talking about this fantastic head sculpt. Capturing again a really good portrait here of David Duchovny and Fox, Fox Mulder. Now, one thing you'll note, one thing you'll see is that the head is one piece with the neck. 
This is the first time that they've done this. They've done this on several instances as well. And it means it guarantees you a seamless transition from the neck to the to the head portion uh, as in, in exchange for having like a cut here where essentially the head would be on top of a neck and then the neck would be attached to the torso basically with a ball joint and a ball joint. Instead, they forfeit one ball joint so that at least it's seamless, like I said, from the neck to the top of his head. There's like no cuts. There's no little awkward hinges here where the head would be planted on top. And I, I like this route personally because it does make the figure look more realistic. And speaking of realism, that, I have to say again, is a really good head sculpt here of Fox Mulder. Right down to his wrinkles on his forehead. They've even got the Mulder little uh, mole there on the side of his face. And they've even airbrushed the indicator of a little bit of stubble on the bottom of his face, like stubble starting to develop on his face. He has a rather somber look, I think a fitting look for this particular character. I wouldn't expect a Mulder to be smiling, uh, an exaggerated expression, for example. After all, this is a guy that's been spending his career trying to discover the truth that the government has been hiding. I don't then expect a character when translated here to plastic, a figure that should have this big smile on his face. I really don't see it myself. So I think this is a better head sculpt and a better expression for this particular character. It'd be interesting once we get the Scully, if they were going to do any tweaks to uh, to Scully's face, if she's going to have a smile or if, again, she's going to have the more serious face. I personally kind of go for Fox and uh, Mulder and Scully. I definitely would go more for, for this sort of face rather than, again, a big, big smile. Paint is done really good here on the head sculpt. It's subtle enough that you do see things like little imperfections on the side of his face. Again, you've got the little wrinkles on the top, but it's not to the extreme that it doesn't, it takes away from the figure where like a lot of those little things, those little nuances do are a little too, uh, too extreme, if you will. The hair, uh, unfortunately, the camera almost picks it up as if it's a really dark brown. In person, actually, it's a medium grade, medium level brown and then they've added some lighter, slightly lighter shades of brown over top of it. Hair sculpt's done really good. Uh, really, really super impressed with the head sculpt as a whole. Now, as an available option for Mulder's outfit, if you get the 3-0 online store exclusive, you also get the trench coat, which would be definitely a very um, plausible option for displaying the figure. You can simply just take his arms, just kind of bring them back, you don't have to worry about taking this suit off, although you may want to take the hands off and just make sure that the watch doesn't fall off in the process. I'm just going to take the watch off just in case. I'm just going to bring those arms up, like dressing a small little human. Bring the arms back like so, and you can bring the jacket up. Both Mulder and Scully, although to be fair, I usually think more Scully wearing a trench coat myself. Just gonna adjust those arms, straighten out the legs. There we go. And uh, then, of course, you can revisit the hands. This is one of those accessories that make sense. Again, depending on how you want to display the figure. Uh, certainly, for enough of the X Files that both. Scully and Mulder have partaken in. There's been many instances where they have worn trench coats and I'm glad that they give you this option. Again, it's the option that has to be picked up through getting the exclusive, which might make the availability of it a little harder, but it probably will end up displaying him with this because it does look so good. For Fox Mulder's articulation, he'll have the following. So revisiting the head sculpt, like I said, the ball joint is right here. It's obvious, obviously not at the top there. But despite that, you still get a full range of motion on his head. The head can tilt side to side, up and down, and technically can rotate all the way around. Just got to be a little bit careful because rotating it, you definitely don't want his, uh, his shirt collar to get snagged and go for the ride. You might actually cause damage to that. So just be mindful. You want to make sure that you are rotating or at the very least, you got to hold on to the collar and rotate his head that way. That will guarantee that nothing's going to be moving, uh, you know, when you are moving the head sculpt. The arms hinge outward. 
Uh, one thing that's interesting though is that they have actually padded, much like a real conventional suit, same as the real working buttons, they've also put shoulder pads in Mulder's jacket here. The arms rotate forward and back. He's got uh, what appears to be a double hinge on the elbow. Look at even like the details. Small little buttons there on the sides of his sleeves, love it. Uh, the hands rotate all the way around and a hinge back and forth. For his waist, his waist moves back and forth. You also have the up and down crunch. Being a little careful here because while he does have a tucked in shirt, I would imagine it would be an absolute nightmare to tuck the shirt back in. So when you are twisting the torso, the waist as well, just be careful that you don't accidentally pull the shirt out in the process. It's a very easy fix by tucking it back into place, but I'm not really good at tucking uh, the 12 inch figures shirts back into place. And then lastly, his legs hinge out. You have a forward and back there. You have a swivel on the top cut of the thigh, allowing the legs to move back and forth. Bend at the knee, double hinge on the knee actually. And then he has uh, an ankle pivot, forward and back on the foot. And to some extent, again, you can rotate the feet all the way around. 3-0 had Mulder slated for a first quarter 2018 release, so you should already see this guy showing up in online markets if you are interested in picking this one up for yourself. The price point, and that's one of the things I always like stressing when it comes to 3-0 releases, the price point is at a very affordable 180. On average, other six scale companies will release a figure at the very least at $200. So 3-0's got you beat. You got a highly detailed figure, tons of accessories for under $200. You can't beat that. The only thing, unfortunately, with picking up a Mulder is the inevitable longing for Scully to be released. This is certainly one of those cases where I can't see anybody really picking up Mulder just on his own. You'd probably be picking up Mulder with the intent of also getting a Scully, which is exactly what I'm hoping for as well. Also as well, if you guys are interested, uh, the online exclusive release of Mulder will come with the previously looked at uh, jacket, the, the, uh, the trench coat. So um, I... Definitely would debate whether I would display him with the trench coat, but I think if it's one of those exclusives, it makes a logical sense that that exclusive would be available with him. Sometimes when you get exclusives with companies, you might get like a gun. It's like, okay, well, uh, would I ever display him with that gun? Here you get an instance in which he comes with a trench coat, and certainly I've seen uh, I've seen all of X-Files, all the X-Files episodes. There's been enough instances where they've gone to local cities, small towns, and they've got themselves the jackets on. So I probably would see myself displaying them with the jacket. But all of that comes into fruition when we eventually get Scully. And I am, I am very anxious to complete this duo by getting the release of Scully. Either way though, today we were having a look at the 3-0. This was the X-Files, one six scale collectible figure of Agent Fox Mulder. Dang, he looks good. If you guys haven't had a chance and you wanted to go back and have a look at some of my other 3-0 reviews, there's a whole playlist designated just for that. You can have a look and see all the things I've done from Walking Dead to, of course, now the X-Files. We can add that to the playlist, but all this stuff will be available on the 3-0 playlist. Make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below, as certainly more videos will be coming to, the, to this channel very, very soon. Of course, I'm always posting new content. This is the best place to find collectibles, figures, and so much more. Make sure you have subscribed to this channel. As always, guys, thanks for watching as you always do. I'll see you next time.